Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. Wait for the drop. Now thanks for everything you're fighting for. Hope you're all having a fantastic day here. My name is Hamilton. I'm going to be walking you through the Bitcoin markets today. So get ready. We're going to be going through the short term for Bitcoin, the mid term, the long term with no sponsors, no affiliate links. Guys, stop emailing me for sponsors. I'm not going to do it. All right. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> And we're also going to go through Ethereum as well here, right? Uh, let's just start this off with what's happened, right? Because yesterday we did say, hey, if we can get over this trap zone, if we can really maintain above it here and potentially come down, retest it and bounce up, then potentially we will have a pattern in play, right? And this pattern we were potentially looking for was uh, a channel or to just stay inside this bigger triangle as we can see, right? Uh, what happened instead is we did come up, right? That's, uh, that's, that's a, a guarantee. And we said, hey, uh, yes, we should expect a rejection somewhere around this area that was previously support right pretty standard stuff and from that point we did reject we didn't get to the top side of the channel so the channel isn't so valid on that top side but what we can do what we can do here on a day like today is something like this where we can just adjust these trend lines a little bit uh, for a bit more clarity uh, on this this white pattern right uh, and this does make sense right now. So we've got a triangle here, but we've also got uh, a bit more of a wider triangle coming through as well, which could lead for some more sideways action uh, for a little bit longer here, for a little bit longer. The thing with triangles in this area, and, and what we can do here for predictions, right, is, is, is look at this and say, right, uh, so this triangle potentially won't be playing out a measure move based on, so this yellow one, right, based on the fact that uh, we are still going to be inside this bigger one, which could cause some negativity if we do break out towards the upside, right? So a bit of fun around this area so playing a measure move from this area from especially even if we went for the most recent wave isn't going to be fantastic what i would be waiting for here is the bigger confirmed pattern so what we're going to do here is actually just get rid of all of this stuff we're going to leave uh this trend line coming down anyway because this is a, a potential um thing to be looking at to begin with here can we just move that ah it's not gonna work it's not gonna work there we go nice beautiful stuff and we can just keep that there as a, as a potential resistance but that isn't an area where we want to be taking trades anymore okay uh, what we want to be doing here is, is essentially looking for a nice breakout of this white pattern as we can see coming through so just drawing that in as uh, something like that that's essentially what we're looking for for the next break uh, and if it is healthy and right now this is fairly uh, respected to both sides so if it does break towards the upside uh, we can expect a potential measure move here what i would say say just to just to be cautious is we do have that 200 EMA coming down at 58 we have had our bigger longer term prediction here being that uh yeah we should potentially stay below 60k uh, or if not 58 59k uh before the end of the month right so we could potentially still have eight to ten days here uh where we don't get a big big move uh but again this measure move in itself would be below 60k still right so yeah potentially coming up there is an opportunity and if we did break out fairly soon here again this would be pretty steep and i would expect a bit of a rejection something like that but uh, if we do essentially get above uh, essentially 57k we'll call it right if we get above 57k then uh, there is potential for this measure move to play out but what i would be doing here is uh obviously having our take profits at these lines a uh, very important areas right so we're talking about uh, 57 seven eight we're talking about uh, just under 59k being an opportunity and uh if you had to close the trade out it would be up up at 60k but that that isn't the full measure move right so i would say just close your your trade out around uh 58.9 that kind of area just anywhere below below these important moving averages because what i'm expecting here is essentially another lower high uh, where we do come up uh, test the this kind of area and then bang it down if we break towards the upside right that's the upside if we do break above 57 again not financial advice here i'm not i'm not advising you to take any trades here this is just what i'm looking at for a potential trade uh, again very trappy area this could not happen we could get rejected quite easily so just be careful we are still in the big chop here the big chop here so a lot of things can happen right uh, if we do get another wave down here it is important to talk about that uh, and right now uh, we're just looking at this pattern in, in itself and looking at that most recent wave it does look like the momentum is turning towards the upside here but uh we should talk about everything uh in itself anyway right so uh, as time progresses this volume weighted atr band will be coming down here uh so if if it did take a bit longer here to break down uh if it wasn't going to be a breakdown right it would be around the 54 5 zone uh, i would be looking at for that breakdown just anywhere along this trend line really if it does break out significantly but we can also draw a trap zone on this based on the wick so let's just do that boom okay 
okay? Uh, so yeah, a, a real cautious trade if you were taking shorts, and this is a lot more advanced if you are a trader because we don't take shorts in a bull market. We expect the bounce to come up uh, and we expect the upwards pressure to remain strong here uh, even when we are in these lower areas, right? 55k lower area for Bitcoin now. Crazy stuff, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, generally, this might come down. Uh, we might just go sideways for a bit longer, pretty much as, as we're expecting anyway, right? Uh, but if we do break down below that 54, uh, 54.5 zone, right, then yeah, there is potential to come down to as low as these low 50s, which which again is, is all expected, all fine, and we do have a plan for that. That would be the short term. Okay, if we're looking at the midterm here, uh, again, still business as usual here. We've played out the, 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 this pattern here, this, uh, this giant wedge towards the downside. That measure move is complete. So now we're just kind of looking around, waiting for where that support's going to be. If we do head up from here, uh, we could have an interesting support, something like this, right? Uh, which could lead to also an interesting parallel channel pretty much here, right? You can see that uh, fairly parallel does the job here. And uh, even if we did give it some room here, yeah, we do have supports there to, to kind of help that out in a sense so uh yeah if we do just bang it up from here on the midterm then we've got a bigger move in play which uh, will be confirmed if we essentially make a nice low around here which i would say yeah if we did come up this would go down as the lows uh, and then we can look to, to basically look to get a, a rejection of 66 on the longer term here and we're talking about potentially coming into next month, right? This could take some time uh, to get up there, uh, as you guys all know, right? So yeah, if that is the case, wherever this this finds that resistance at that top area could be uh, coming into next month, as we said, right? Uh, if we did get up to 67, then we bang it above there and we could potentially have a ridiculously juicy measure move here towards the upside, uh, again, targeting that 80K area. So as we've said before, no need to worry in a crash like this. If we do come down, we come down. We have areas of support, we have areas to look at, but what we're doing right now is essentially trying to find that next bigger pattern, right? Uh, you guys know for my longer term, I've, I'm basically expecting a bit more of a longer sideways period uh, coming into next month. And then uh, maybe early early next month, we'll start a little bit of an uptrend and continue the run from there. That's kind of my main prediction. But again, I'm not going to be blindly longing that until we have a confirmed trend, until we're above the volume weighted ATR band, until things are looking pretty good on the midterm at least, right? Uh, what we can say here for the downside, if we do get a major crash here, if the stock markets do just bang it down, if everything bangs it down here, uh, then we could look could be looking at the mid 40s i wouldn't expect 43k to be touched uh, i would i would generally as i said 46k uh, being my absolute bottom right now and i would expect a quick v-shaped recovery from that point if that is the case okay uh, so be aware of that uh, maybe maybe they do push it down for a little bit uh, maybe some big players do exit so it could get extremely volatile as it has been as you can see right uh, but it could get a lot worse here before it gets a lot better so it's best to just have a bit of caution here uh, wait for nice patterns to present themselves and again we have this on the, the the short term anyway so we don't really need to draw it in too much here but that yeah we have that short term trade potentially uh, and the longer the, the midterm trades are a little bit further out but uh, again that's that's not a, a negative thing because uh, it means the move is going to be better it's going to be more reliable and it's going to be uh yeah easier to make the money in a probable bigger pattern break scenario right mid uh, long term here long term it does look pretty good here right uh, when you have whenever you see wicks coming down like this on a 24 hour uh you can say hey yes um uh, some upwards pressure is obviously in play here and if we can get a bounce from that area that is fine uh, and we do have potential areas for that to get to before uh, coming down right so another lower high potentially here around the 60k zone uh, is is potentially in play but again we can still drop down if we did lose 50 uh, no we'll say 50k here if we lose 50k anywhere around here then yeah I mean we're looking at a potential bigger dump coming through. But again, I wouldn't be shorting that. I'd just be waiting for longs for when we recover and get over the, the significant round of blue box zones, right? Which would be at like 54K if we do dump down to 46. 54K if we get back above there, that could potentially be a very nice trade to come through with a lot of upwards pressure on a potential reversal from the downtrend, right? That's what we're looking for, right? Uh, so that's what I would look for there. And obviously if we do come down into this area and we don't dump, which is still a possibility. So the, the low 50s testing that area and then bouncing up, there might be a potential trade here as well uh, around the 54s just banging it up taking profit each one of these lines as we go and then boom right look for that bigger pattern to be confirmed uh, this bad boy here uh, and then we'd be all good here towards the upside for a beautiful trade going up right and that's pretty much it filtering it all out and getting bitcoin done and again i'm not feeling too fantastic today i can still taste and smell so it's all good but i do, do a little bit of a cold sniffles going on here so uh, yeah i'm not going to be doing too long of a video i will still be doing the webinar tonight guys so uh, and if that does change, I will just drop you an email and you will be reserved for the next week or the next two weeks or whatever. 
But yes, uh, I am. I'm essentially looking to do the webinar tonight. If I still have a voice, that'd be cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we can carry on doing that. Uh, if you do want to sign up to that, link is in the description. Completely free to attend. We're going to be doing. We're going to be doing risk management, um, uh, mindset stuff, and uh, a nice little strategy here for when we do start trending again. Cool? Cool. Sound fair enough? Sound fair enough. So what we're going to do here is look at Ethereum right now and just say, hey, wow, what a big pump here coming through. I would be very cautious of a pump like this. Despite there being quite a lot of volume, uh, I would expect this to kind of curl over at some point here. Um, but if it does head up, let's look at the measure moves here on the shorter time frames. We do have a nice trend line coming through here. Let me just kind of uh, get this a little bit better looking. Uh, nice trend line. Yeah, potentially here is what we're looking at, right? So potentially breaking over that. But if we do find too much resistance here, uh, again, we have smashed through moving averages like they don't matter. So typically when that happens here, guys, it can often be a trap where we do uh, just grind back down. So be careful with that on Ethereum. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet, but it's looking a bit better. And if we are to really uh, look at this as a confirmed low as well, we can also have see, ha see that we have a wedge here as well, right? So that wedge measure move, if we do get a, a nice burst of volume here, could potentially be up to the volume weighted ATR band on the hourly for Ethereum, which is uh, 2,500. If that does happen, uh, I would expect a potential rejection from there. Again, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking for Ethereum to do pretty much the same thing as Bitcoin. Just be careful, right? Uh, because they are in kind of weird spots right now. You can see Ethereum uh, at the top side of its pattern, uh, and then obviously Bitcoin in the middle. So we got to be careful of that and how they might drag each other around today. Uh, expecting a lot of volatility throughout the, the rest of this week. So just be careful. And what I will say here is if it does look good, uh, maybe there's a trade here. But me personally, I'm still holding my Ethereum as long as, as I said, as long as we're above kind of 1800 above this, these kind of top areas, uh, these kind of breaking structure areas. Right. Uh, then for me, that's uh, that's fine. I'm happy to continue holding my Ethereum because we got in at 1200. Right. So this is fine. We're still massively in the profit. I mean, 100 percent profit now right now. So it's, it's cool. Right. We're, we're happy letting this run up. Uh, and if it does continue, then it's great. It's actually quite good for Bitcoin as well. If Ethereum's continuing pumping because uh, it might drag Bitcoin up a little bit into these areas. Right. So that's what I would say there. And that's pretty much the video, guys. Sorry, it's a quicker one. Uh, I'm just trying to maintain my energy here for the webinar tonight for you guys. But um, yeah, feel free to drop a little like and uh, make sure to be trading safe out there, right? I will see you in the next video. Peace out and goodbye.